Good morning, Wesley family. How is everybody on this dreary morning? Fine, you're fine. All your mama's fine. Grandma's fine. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. If you have an opportunity to go out there and take a picture in the prayer garden, I highly encourage it. But it could be a little bit wet. Get dressed up when the sun comes out and go try it again. It's a beautiful place to take pictures. Uh, if you look on the back of your bulletin, the orange QR code, that is how we register our attendance. Just hover your phone over that and just push the little button, follow the directions. Uh, we'd love to know if you're a visitor with us. We also have our uh, prayer requests in our church calendar you can take a look at. A couple of announcements. On Tuesday, May 14th, our women of Wesley are going to have a ton of fun and laughter playing games. I heard it's, it's ruthless. Ms. Bobby said it's ruthless. If you like to play games, put your game face on and come on and play. They're also going to have salad luncheon along with it. But I've heard these women like to get a little bit, you know, rowdy. So grab your neighbor, grab a friend, come have a great time with these women. But we got some sad news. Wacky Wednesday. It's the last Wacky Wednesday. I know, for the summer. I mean, we've got so much going on. Drew will have his final Bible study on Titus. Hasn't changed since the first service, but, you know, there's a lot going on. You know, so he'll have his last um, short Bible study on Wednesday and our last Wacky Wednesday. Um, the youth will be meeting at the Dupree's, though. So if you're one of my youth, we're going to meet at the Dupree's and have our, our final one at the Dupree's. Next Sunday is graduation Sunday. We're going to be recognizing our graduates. Most of them will be in the 9 o'clock service, but I have some that will definitely come to this service. So we're going to recognize them next Sunday. And if you're not busy on May 21st and 22nd at 10 a.m., I encourage you to come to the Mother's Day Out program. If you've never seen a little kid program, you need to come check them out. They are so much fun, so cute. It is, if you're not busy, I really encourage you to come watch the Mother's Day Out program. It's super cute, and that's May 21st and 22nd. And on May 27th, we will be closed that Monday for a Memorial Day. So just postpone if you need to do anything on the Tuesday. All right, and happy Mother's Day. You know, all you mamas, your grandmamas, you, you know, aunts, all these women in our lives, even if you're not a mama, you're somebody's mama to somebody. And I, you know, I have a handful of them, ma'am. Fur babies, yes, if you have a pet, you're definitely a mom. So even you fur mamas. All right, any other announcements? All right, let's stand in worship.
Well, good morning and happy Mother's Day and Grandmother's Day and Great Grandmother's Day. And um, as uh, Treva said, if you if if you are not a grandmother or a great grandmother or mother, you have certainly uh, poured into someone, and we thank you for that. You're a mother to somebody. Um, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day as we celebrate mothers and that the tender love and care that they give is, is just, um, it's just unmatched, Lord. It, 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 and we know you are the Father, but you also have that tender love. And, and we see that played out in, in the moms of this church and the moms of our lives. And, 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 and Lord, so we just thank you that you have provided us with that that tender love, that that um, that nurturing love uh, that we men aren't aren't as good at, um, in but you have given that to to women, and we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, as we um, as we are here today, we have many people, many situations, joys, concerns, heartbreaks, heartaches on our minds today, and. Lord, we just lift them all up to you and, and all those who are on our, on our prayer list today and, and those um, who may not have anybody praying for them at all, those folks in our community, uh, maybe they're homeless or maybe they're just alone and, and they've been forgotten and no one is lifting them up, Lord. Well, we lift up those people today that you would touch them in a special way. And Lord, we, um, we're grateful that we can assemble together in your house this morning freely as is not the case in every part of this world. And so we thank you for that opportunity as well. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who is our advocate and prays for us, guides us and resides in us, Lord. We thank you for your son who so appropriately taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
the ushers please come forward? Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts you've bestowed upon us. We know, Lord, that, that we are gifted to partially give, give back to you. So accept these gifts as a token of our love for you and our growing love for you. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. It is now time for the children and tween sermon. Can all the children and tweens please come forward?
well. Today's a very special day. It's Mother's Day. It's a day that we honor our mothers and we tell them how much we love them and we show them how much we love them. You know, I brought a few things that reminds me of my mother and one of those things is oatmeal. Do y'all like oatmeal? <laughs> well, I'm gonna be honest with you. My idea of a healthy breakfast was a chocolate covered donut for sure. However, my mother had other ideas, and she thought, or, or she knew that I needed oatmeal, toast, and orange juice so that it would make me strong and healthy, and because she loved me. The next thing was books. My mother knew that I needed to come home and do my homework every single day, but some of my friends got to go home, and they uh, were able to watch TV for a little while, but not me. I had to do my homework and read books because my mother knew that if I, if I made good grades that I would have a great education and because she loved me. Next, if I wanted to go to a friend's house, the clock that's on my phone that we did not have when I was little, you know, um, I had to call my mother whenever I got to my friend's house tell her what we were doing, where I was at, what we were doing, and what time I would be home. Now, why did she make me do that? Because she wanted to know and make sure that I was safe at all times and because she loved me. But the very last thing was this darn soap. My mother knew, or she did not know back then what ch child labor laws were, but she believed that we all had to take our part and to make sure that our house was clean and orderly. Um, and she also wanted to teach me responsibility. So that is why I have this on so soap and, and to make sure that I knew what to do and that she loved me with that too. My mom isn't here anymore. She's in heaven. And she probably has the angels dusting off the pearly gates and sweeping the golden streets. My mother was like that. But sometimes I thought I was being mistreated, but I wasn't. My mother did these things. She, the reason she did these things was because she loved me and she wanted what was best for me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our mothers. Help us to, rem to remember that when we think our mother is mistreating us, she is just showing us how much she loves us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for coming up. Our scripture reading today is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. Thank you. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, I am persuaded it is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I want to wish everybody again a happy Mother's Day. Also, you'll notice that we have uh, Courtney directing our choir, and uh, Kathy uh, Ranka lost her mom this week. 
and those, um, it's not really service, um, it's going to be a, as Kathy called it, something informal, but it, it, it is going to be a, a memorial service of some sort. It's 11 o'clock this Thursday, and it's at a place that I can't um, pronounce. Do you know it? It's like Gruyere or something? Grameer? Grameer Oberly or Oberly Grameer? All right, well, that's where it's at at 11. I was probably going to look it up Wednesday to f figure out how to get there. I tried to look it up at my phone um, before I got up here, and I was getting all types of uh, Gruyere cheese uh, <laughs> things. Uh, Grameer Oberly at 11 o'clock. We will get that out an email tomorrow, probably. Um, she's doing okay. Um, uh, she's had a lot on her plate, and um, I appreciate uh, Courtney stepping in so wonderfully as she as she always does. Okay, um, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. This is your time. I ask that you speak through me and in spite of me today, Lord. Um, Holy Spirit, come anoint. Come anoint my my words, Holy Spirit, because I know that any fruit that this sermon bears is because you produced it and worked through me and in spite of me. Thank you. We pray all this in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Well, today we're, we're talking about a heritage of faith. We're talking about legacies. You know, I, I think most of us get concerned about legacies and, and, and what, what people are going to say about us at our funeral. And one of the, one of the things I like to tell uh, my parishioners at every church I go is do not make me lie at your funeral. I'm looking at you, George, out there. <laughs> That's right. He never misses a beat. Um, yeah, you know, we, we worry about, I think we get too caught up, though, in, in the world when it comes to this stuff. You know, from a, from a young age, I hear these kids talking about where they rank in school, and I'm fifth, and I'm ninth, and I'm 20th, and, and you know, some of that's good. I mean, we want to excel. Uh, we've got batting averages, and, and you know, uh, just scores and everything, and everything is all these extracurricular activities, and then when you become adults, you got to meet bottom lines. And even as a pastor, it's like the first thing people ask is, well, how big is your church? And I'm like, well, um, you know, what do you mean how big is it? How about how many baptisms we're doing? How, many, how about what's going on in your church, whether there's 20 people or 2,000 people? Because there, there's a temptation in ministry uh, to just go to the next bigger pulpit and feel like you arrived. Now, I don't see that. That's not, that's not my deal. But um, I know in other denominations, the, den the denomination I came from, there was a lot of people that, that saw each church as a stepping stone to get to the big pulpit church where they had a lot of influence and a lot of power. And, and, you know, that's just not, I don't, think what we're, I don't think that's what we're supposed to do. There are some great pastors that have 25 people, and their churches are doing wonderful things. And, and some of them are better pastors than, than we are at the mid-sized to larger churches. And so, um, anyways, um, but, but, you know, so we live in this compare and contrast world, and and we want to live this legacy, and we got bucket lists, right? We got, you know, we, we all want to cross stuff off our bucket list. And, and you know, uh, I don't know. There's nothing really wrong with that. But we've got to be careful. Because really what it comes down to is, is, is not being famous and special in this life, right? I, when I was in my early 20s and late teens, I wanted to be famous and, and, and special. I actually... Uh, had an interview with MTV to go on one of their reality shows. I got, I got a call back, and I was so excited, but it, it didn't happen. But I was so excited because I, wanted just, I just wanted to be famous. But that's not what God has for me. 
And, and you know, it's interesting because of all the people that's lived in this world besides Jesus, is Paul would be like the first person probably in the Christian Hall of Fame. This is a guy that helped spread Christianity in its earliest years, which we're going to be talking about in the book of Acts in the fall in, in my Bible study. And it's fascinating because he wrote this letter to Timothy from a dungeon. It was this abandoned cistern where he waited on his final days before being beheaded by Emperor Nero. And we know that from extra biblical sources. And so he's concerned about Timothy carrying on his ministry, not so Paul could get the credit, but so people would come to faith in the, the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus Christ. Listen to what he writes later on in this letter. He, he says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. Notice, he's about to be beheaded. He doesn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't care. He's worried about what happens to his ministry, not for him, but because it was an effective ministry across the Mediterranean landscape. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Man, what if we could all, if, if, if just, you know, people would say that about us at our funerals. Wouldn't that be great and be able to mean it, you know, instead of trying to f figure out, well, you know, he's a really big Astros fan and he liked his beer. And yeah, he's probably up there having a beer with God, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Right? This stuff that makes no sense. So finally, he says this, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who loved his appearing. So the only trophy, so to speak, that Paul's concerned about is the crown of righteousness. He's not concerned about his bucket list. He's not concerned about telling Timothy, Hey, look, Make sure people know everything that I did, okay? Uh, let, let people know, you know, kind of I took you under my wing and I'm a big deal and, you know, I, man, I missionized Colossae and Philippi and, I, you know, I'm I just, you know, I'm, I'm just saying let people know I was pretty special there, Timothy. No, he's not saying that at all. He cares about one thing, getting the sinless, righteous blood of Christ on everybody he can. And that's the legacy we all should be striving for. I'll tell you, it took me a long time to get there. As I, as I told you, you know, 20 plus years ago, I, was, I, I wanted to be on TV because I thought I should be famous. But um, as I've, I've gotten into ministry, uh, I haven't wanted to be famous. It, actually, being famous seems so unappealing to me, you know? It's hard enough to, 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 to just go on a public in Nederland, right? Um, and, and say hi to people and kiss babies and everything, you know? I love it because that means that people like me and they're willing to greet me in public. I mean, even, even Courtney will greet me in public. That's amazing, you know? And so I'm really proud of that. <laughs> um... Back to the sermon. So, um, <laughs> uh, we are all going to stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. And there's going to be two things that we're going to have to talk about with Jesus. Number one, you accepted me and received me as your Lord and Savior. Correct? Yes, Jesus, of course I did. He might not even ask that because obviously he, he would know. But... The second question is, what did you do with it? Did you cross stuff off your bucket list? And look, I have a, a bucket list. It's not very big, but, you know, I'd like to go to Scotland, the birthplace of golf someday. And if you want to, you know, October in a few months is Pastor Appreciation Month. And if you want to send me there, that'd be great. Um, hint, hint. But no, I'm just, I'm just I'm, I'm kidding. Sort of. No, um, I'm kidding. Um, so, so, 
So, you know, but we have these bucket lists and people say, Drew, don't you want to see the world? I'm like, I'm going to see it. And it, it, God's getting rid of this world at some point. It's going to be a new earth and it's going to be awesome. So I'll get to see, um, I'll get to see Finland someday. I'll get to see Scotland someday. It'll look a lot different. It won't be stained with sin, but I'll get to see it. And, 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 and you know, it's, it's, it's not our... It's not our retirement portfolio, our wallet. It's not our reputation. It, it, it's, not about, um, it, it, it's, it's not about trophies. It, it's not about what, what people are saying about you. What it is, is what did you do with the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ for the world? How, what did you do with that? And that'll be determined, and that will have some ramifications. Now, there's no penthouse level to heaven. Everybody goes to the same heaven. But we will have different jobs. And we'll get different crowns and rewards. And you say, well, Drew, I thought it wasn't about crowns and rewards. It's not. But when you get crowns and rewards for doing good things for Jesus, that means that you did good things for Jesus. So you want those crowns, not to keep them, because you'll, you'll lay them at the feet of Jesus Christ. You know, some of, the, some of my heroes, my heroes 20 years ago were sports stars and golfers and all that. My heroes now are some of you. In every church I've been in, there have been fantastic Christians. And, and, and this church is no exception, but I want to tell you about one person who was here earlier today who never pastored a church and never, was, never will be famous, never had a job that paid her any substantial amount of money. There's never going to be a documentary about her. And no one will want her autograph, but her legacy is one that everyone should strive for because she is a selfless prayer warrior who inspired me to go deeper in my walk with the Lord when I was nothing more than a fair-weather Christian who barely knew any content of Scripture. And here I stand today with a platform to help others know about Jesus and grow in Jesus because she inspired me, and her name is Mom. And she was here earlier, and um, she's one of those people that'll never be famous, but that I look up to. She's one of my heroes. And, and you know, there's, I, I've often said to, to friends and family, you know, the people that should be famous aren't. And a lot of times the people that are famous shouldn't be famous. Not that like fame is something good, right? But it's like we should, I mean, the people that, 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 that serve the Lord in such a selfless way, to me, those people should be lifted up before um, Taylor Swift. That's a heritage of faith. That's a legacy that matters. And, and all this brings to mind the words of Paul to Timothy, he says, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, he is, he is talking about those who have poured into Timothy, first grandmother Lois, and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded in you also. In other words, Timothy's grandmother Lois and his mother had a real genuine faith in Christ, and that inspired Timothy. And Timothy then went on to have an influence over millions and millions of people, maybe hundreds and hundreds of millions of people over the next 2,000 years. That's a heritage of faith. That's a legacy of faith. Because our goal should not be anything other than wanting to hear the words at the judgment seat, well done good and faithful servant. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand and affirm our faith this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn, Because He Lives. Amen. Thank you all for being here today. Um, I do want to ask for special prayers for the Heidenrich family, uh, for uh, Adam and Sherry and Corey and Nolan and Jackie Filial, who's who's here today. Uh, and I'm going over there to Houston uh, in just a few minutes to go pray over Jordan. Um, he is um, he just needs a lot of prayers. Uh, it appears that he is in heaven's waiting room. Um, and if you would like to contribute to some of the fees that Adam and Sherry um, have um, have incurred, um, that would be that would be great. Um, you can give that um, in the office. Um, I forgot to say this at the first service, but yeah, you can give that to the office, um, and or in the memo line, just say uh, Jordan Heidenrich, uh, because they've incurred a lot. Um, um, of, of fees, especially for food and food and hotel and gas, uh, going back and forth to Houston. So let's keep them uh, in your prayers. Jordan's had about a four-year battle with this, and um, I think uh, the Lord's fixing to heal him. So uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll just be in prayer. Uh, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we. We thank you for the Heidenrich family, and we just pray for Jordan right now that he feels your presence in a deep way. 
in a profound way. And we ask for comfort for Jackie and, and the family and that they feel your comfort in a very profound way as we know that you're close to the brokenhearted. And Lord, as we go here today, help us to know that our legacy is all tied up in Jesus Christ. So help us to show people the way and the truth and the life that's found in the way and the truth and the life himself, Jesus Christ. It's his name we pray. Amen. Thank you.